hi guys welcome to the channel and today we're doing a review about owning a, t a tesla and whether you're supposed to get a tesla or not and today we're gonna review i've owned this tesla model 3 for quite some time and i'm going to give you an honest review about whether to get a tesla or not and whether to go ev or still kind of stay with your gas powered vehicle let's go so owning a gas powered vehicle it's i've driven a gas powered vehicle all my life and one thing i'm gonna say is um owning the tesla has a different feeling to it. kind of um you able to have that kind of saving a lot of money when it comes to gas you save really really much on gas and it's economical owning an electric car also it's very efficient when it comes to waking up early in the morning you don't need to warm up the engine you just start and go and the technology in tesla is like extremely great it's i'll give it an a plus now it's not about reviewing the tesla per se but it's about owning an electric car so let's trade it from this one we're looking about the range owning a gas car you never think about range how far your car can go and all that you never think about range there's nothing like range anxiety but owning an electric car anybody who has one will tell you there's what we call range anxiety let's say you're traveling from one city to another let's say san diego to la before you start your car or start moving you need to check all the supercharges um on your way and you ask yourself do you need to take your plug-in charge in case maybe you get to where your destination and it's a family member's place if you can kind of plug in and top up your charge and that is what we call the range anxiety which comes with electric cars they're going to tell you maybe uh if you buy the long range you're going to get a long um, range with reference to how long you can drive when you buy the long range of the tesla model 3 but the truth of the matter is it's going to say 200 to 270 to 300 miles but one you cannot charge the tesla um battery to 100 percent when you charge it to 100 percent even the manual states if you charge it to 100 percent continuously the battery kind of loses its durability and it kind of wears out quickly so you charge it 90 percent so automatically you're not getting the um how do you call it you're not getting the 300 to 270 to 300 miles that is cut off so you're getting like 260 miles now on the 260 miles, the truth about electric vehicles is when you turn on the radio, it takes off some of your miles. When you turn on the heater, if it's extremely cold, it takes on some of your miles. And also depending on outside weather, your miles also could reduce. Compared to a um, regular gas powered car, you don't have those things to think about. All you think about is the nearest gas station. And the gas powered car have been with us for a long time, so it's like, the network of gas stations is dead everything is over there you never even think i don't know anybody going to buy a gas power a powered car thinking about where is the nearest gas station so with range anxiety it's very stressful if you don't want to deal with it then don't get an electric car and if you don't want to kind of spend more than 20 to depending on the supercharge for 40 minutes at a charging um, location don't get an electric car because sometimes it's stressful you kind of late and the the distance is far and you need to kind of stop to charge to continue your journey compared to a regular um gas station you go pump get out and keep going but with this one you need to kind of put in um extra hours or extra minutes in every journey you take which you don't you don't go through that challenges with a gas powered vehicle now let's look at buying cars you can easily buy a second-hand gas-powered vehicle without worrying too much about 
whether it's going to break down and all those craziness because and also you know if it breaks down there are like a lot of uh, mechanical shops around where you can fix it so when we buy um, second hand or third hand car or we even get in grandma's car as a gift we never think about will this car survive all those issues surrounding it second hand cars you don't even think about that but when you buy in a second hand electric vehicle let's say like a tesla which i drive you have to look at the range the car has covered before you even buy it because tesla has hundred thousand range of warranty so when the hundred thousand range of warranty is covered and you buy that car know that anything that happens you're supposed to pay and most issues that is found with electric vehicles are the battery packs your battery packs can just lose its uh, how do you call it mileage by let's say more than 20 percent without you doing nothing and you you'll be forced to change it and when issues big issues like my tesla i remember i was driving and all of a sudden the battery packs the battery started behaving funny and i couldn't charge it anymore and luckily enough i had over 60 miles 60,000 miles on it i have not clogged my 100,000 so i took it to the tesla dealership and they were so nice the tesla dealership of temecula they so great great service excellent a class i'll give it to them they gave me a loaner car they changed the battery and they did it even faster than i thought like they told me it was going to take uh, a couple of weeks but they did it less than three days I, I took I took my car back, so that was great from them. But imagine you bought a Tesla second hand, and it had over hundred thousand miles on it. Automatically, you're supposed to buy the new battery pack, which is going to cost you like um, over fourteen to fifteen thousand dollars. And I don't think buying a used gas car, you for let's say on craigslist for let's say six thousand dollars ten thousand dollars you're going to waste more than sink more than fourteen thousand in it to fix simple issues like engine problems you, the maximum you're going to waste let's say let's chip in three thousand but compared to a tesla you're going to waste more than fourteen thousand to replace the battery and that is most of the issue that is found with tesla when the battery life stops dropping and the warranty is just 100,000 miles. So after 100,000 miles and you see all this disaster occurring in your face, then you're going to sink in and lose more money. And one thing is, let's say you bought it on in a dealership. Imagine buying a car, let's say a used car for, let's say, $25,000, $30,000, and you have not finished paying and the battery packs die. Are you going to park the car there and still pay the note on the car? It's very stressful. So you and if you're going to use the car for let's say a ride share, you want the car back to make more money. So let's say you bought it for twenty five thousand and you're going to sink in let's say another um, fifteen thousand in repairs. That makes it forty thousand. So I encourage everybody anytime you buy an electric car, just buy brand new. Don't buy used. If you buy used, make sure you have at least less uh, um, it, the previous owner has not used more than 50 percent of the warranty like let's say if it's hundred thousand if you buy a used electric vehicle buy let's say um thirty thousand miles fifteen thousand miles don't go buy a sixty thousand miles electric vehicle that's crazy you're going to get extreme headache so when it comes to secondhand electric vehicles it's not worth it and now we can see what is happening um heads rental they're struggling they, they're kind of selling up all their Electric cars is going to cost them over 200 million dollars, and Ford has stopped the production of the um, Lightning, the F-150 electric. Electric cars, yes, they are very good. They are very economical. They are very safe, green. They help the environment. But my advice to anybody, whether to buy an electric car or not to buy an electric car, for my past experience and this experience I'm going through is. Yes, buy an electric car if you're going to use it for short rides. Let's say you work, let's say, uh, maximum 30 miles in and out from your workplace or let's say 50 miles in and out from your workplace. Yes, you can get an electric car, which it's going to help you um, commute and you're going to save a lot on 
full and you know, a, a full insurance and you're going to get the rebate if you're in california that's good if you're using electric cars but if you're going to buy an electric car and you do a lot of interstate travel you do a lot of long distance travel i think electric car is not the best it's not the best you're going to stress out you're going to have a big regret electric cars are not meant for long journeys so if you know you're going to make more than um let's say in and out more than 100 miles a day um 100 miles okay you can manage that but if you're making more than 200 miles like journeys continuously don't buy an electric car you're going to waste your money you're going to stress out and selling an electric car to the um, how do you call it the car depreciates faster that's one thing i've noticed about electric cars they really depreciate faster when it goes to when you go to um, dealerships to kind of trading with other cars you don't get a good price so electric cars depreciation it's very very like crazy so that's one thing you have to look at if you want to resell electric cars no when you own it think about something you own in forever and maintaining forever unless maybe you have a good samaritan who wants to buy it from you that's great and if you buy an electric car always buy a brand new electric car so that you get all the perks that comes with it with reference to uh warranty so always buy a, a brand new electric car then also let's talk about um the feel of driving it it drives extremely well tesla really drives very well but there's a little bit of um little bit of you know um they're getting in touch with the wind noise coming into the car because the model 3 has a lot of outside wind noise coming into the car and it's kind of stressful sometimes you're driving and you feel you've not closed all the windows then you check everything is closed but there's still wind noise coming compared to the older builders like honda mercedes-benz toyota where you don't have that kind of large amount of wind noise coming into the car so that's one thing too but with that is tesla that's not related to electric that's more of the built issue compared to an electric and also when you buy an electric vehicle it's i'll say it's safe to buy an electric vehicle if you have your own house or you live in an apartment that has a plug-in because apart from that i don't think you should get an electric vehicle if you live in an apartment and the charging spot is far from your house because let's say winter hits right and you want to do an emergency drive out with you having like me having a charging station at home i always get a full charge every day i always have a full charge but if you live in an apartment and you're driving an electric vehicle and there is a snowstorm or there's high snow you need to drive out from your house go sit outside in the snow for let's say 20 to 30 40 minutes charging your car where if you drive in your gas powered car you don't need to go out that much to charge because you can just drive through a gas station fill it up we don't even think about those kind of gas when it comes to gas powered vehicle so that's one thing to consider if you live in an apartment i don't think electric vehicle is the best for you unless the apartment complex you live in has um, a lot of charging stations because when winter comes and there's heavy snow and especially a lot of people who have tesla live in apartments that's like the average american and sometimes you go to um, the charging um, station and a lot of cars parked in the snow and the snow is kind of falling and you see the ice building up and you you're still in line waiting to charge your car compared to somebody who lives in his house and charges his car so what i'll say is do not do not uh, buy an electric vehicle if you live in an apartment which does not have um, how do you call it a charging station we can trust technology to increase whereby there's going to be a lot of charging stations all over the country and all over the um, communities but for now they are not there and we're talking about the now and the now is um, now so if you don't have it if we don't have it i don't think you should buy it and stress yourself so in conclusion i don't want to bore you a lot in conclusion what i'll say is electric vehicles are great but they are not great for long journeys 
I've had this Tesla since 2020 when it came out of the Lord. I got it. And I'll say it has helped me a lot. I've saved a lot. It's one of the best decisions I made. Tesla is a great car. But in a certain way, I love my gas-powered vehicle because like when I'm going for a long journey, it's very reliable with my gas-powered vehicle. And I feel comfortable. I don't stress too much. And also, when it comes to um, the economics, then I'll say I'll go with the Tesla. So yeah, if you live in a town and you have a short ride to work day in, day out, I think a Tesla is best. And you can buy the Model 3 because you're just driving it to work and everything. But if you have a family, I don't think it's, it's good to have the Model X or the Cybertruck. But hey, those most of the times SUVs are used for long journeys. Trucks are used for long hauls. So if you're buying a Cybertruck, you want to get something reliable so you can get the cyber track but hey sometimes look at your decisions look at the future before you purchase an electric car so on this i'll say thank you follow the channel like subscribe and cheers